Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So what I'm going to show you is real evidence. This is the real stuff. And you'll see that when you, if you ever get into understanding what I'm actually talking about and have any idea of the actual evidence that I have, then you'll understand that my story is the one that's interesting. And the reason I call everybody fake fans and stuff is because you guys simply can't deal with the real story because mine's the interesting one. If you were any form of any kind of credible Michael Jackson fan whatsoever, you'd be dealing with my story because mine's the one. Okay, now watch this. This is really important. I like the records. It's Diana Ross who, who kind of did it for you fellas, isn't it? Yes, she started us off. Um, we, uh, we did a talent show in Gary, Indiana at Roosevelt High School. Okay, so right there, um, they're doing a talent, talent show at, in Gary, Indiana at Roosevelt High School, okay? And the, the mayor guest was Diana Ross. She was okay. The 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 main guest. The, uh, there's, there's a story I know about the mayor, and there's other stuff, but but anyway. So an important guest is Diana Ross is there, and she's an important guest, right? Sitting in the audience, and we did the show, and she liked it very much, and she came backstage and told us how much she liked it, and from there on. Okay, so. They did good at the show, and I believe that they won the show there. Diana Ross comes backstage and talks to them and tells Michael she spoke to him and said, Oh, I like the show so much, okay? So all of this happened. This is Michael telling you. And there's Diana in Guyana speaking to Michael Jackson as a kid before he signed to Motown. Soon after that, were you recording? Oh, about um, three weeks. Oh, like a miracle. Holy <laughs> okay, so... Then he says after that, they're recording at Motown three weeks. Now, the story that I'm saying is that Diana Ross goes there to check on them. And what she wants to do is that there's the talent show there. And I think that that talent show leads to a gig for them at the Regal Theater. And I'm going to show you something, something more about that. But I think so what happens is I think that Diana goes there and makes sure that Michael wins that because I think Diana's setting this up. And so Diana makes sure that she makes, makes sure that the Jacksons win that because then that is going to get them uh, a performance at the Regal. And at the Regal then she's got waiting uh, Bobby Taylor in the Vancouver's. And now, let me show you a little bit about Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's. Is, uh, this is going to be Tommy Chong. Uh, he's part of the comedy team Cheech and Chong. But when he was younger, he was, a, in a, he was a guitar player in a band called Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's, which is actually signed to Motown. And when you know Bobby Taylor, he was really good friends with Smokey Robinson. Okay, so listen to this part now. Um, so before you were an actor... Way before that, you were uh, in a band yeah. called Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's. Yeah. Okay, so there's uh, there's Tommy Chong there on the left. You know, that's he's a, that's the band. That was one of the names. That was one of the names. Yeah. I heard several of the names. Yeah. And I'm glad for your sake that they didn't stick to the name that you chose. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have been signed. No, I don't think no, so. No. I do not think so. Um, but it's funny because I was reading that the Jackson Five yeah. opened for you guys one time. Yep. Yeah. Before they were Jackson 5. So, what were they at the time? They were called Jackson 5 plus Johnny. Oh, yeah. And they were from the high school in, in Gary, Indiana. Oh, and they won a contest. Okay, so right there, you know, he says he recognizes them from being from the high school in Gary, Indiana, and they won a contest. And that's what I'm thinking that... Uh, when he's saying that, I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking that the contest in the high school, I'm thinking that that's the show that Diana Ross attended. Okay? And if that's true, then you've got Diana Ross. That puts Diana Ross meeting Michael Jackson before the Bobby Taylor thing. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal in the history to understand. But it's definitely something that backs up my story to show the credibility that I'm showing the proper timeline and events here that these things were happening. An amateur contest where they got to open at the Regal Theater in, in Chicago. And we were co-headlining with Jerry Butler and Bobby Tidd and Vancouver and Jackson Pine. Okay, so he's telling you that they are playing at the Regal Theater there with his group, the Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver. So what happens is the story of history says that that performance, 
the one that he's talking about there, that that's the performance that leads to Bobby Taylor then taking the Jacksons under his wing and then he's the one that directly takes them to Motown and gets the uh, he's the one that gets the auditions and everything so that's the actual way the story is written so he's telling you there that uh, the Jacksons came from the Gary Indiana because they won a talent show and then Michael himself is telling you that he was doing a talent show there at the Roosevelt High School and Diana Ross was there so it shows that it was a significant and then it was three weeks after that that he's with Motown so that's what it looks like to me that Diana said all that stuff it's like look at she's right there and then the Bobby Taylor once you get into the history like I said Bobby Taylor's got a long history with Smokey Robinson there's much more going on there so now listen to this other part here when he was eight, ten years old, mm -hmm. eight years old, he was an adult. Like a grown man in a, a little suit. A grown body. man in a little suit. Okay, so one of the main things, that, so he says his first uh, recollection of Michael, when he saw Michael, everything about Michael was like professional adult, like this little kid is like an adult, he's got the talent, he's acting, he's mature, this is a professional little kid, okay, so his, and so right there, that would be the exact time when he's met Diana, but I'm saying Diana hasn't told him yet that she's his mother okay she's met him now but she hasn't told him so Michael's still just a Jackson at this time but now look at what happens what uh how Tommy looks at him and you can do all the moves perfect perfect moves Jackie Wilson moves you know just dance James Brown do all that stuff wow. <clears throat> the older he got the younger he got that's so crazy until pretty soon when he was near near death he was like a baby yeah, yeah so and that's the reality that this is what he saw he was around he knew Michael Jackson he was he was observing him he was observing, observing his life and what what was his observation when he met Michael Jackson as a young man Michael was like an adult very much a normal kid more like an adult very sophisticated okay but by the time Michael passes away he's like childlike okay what I'm saying happen is right there is what you'll see is that's when Diana Ross steps in. And if Diana Ross informs Michael at that time, it would be very near around this time, very shortly after that. Diana informs Michael that she's his mother, informs him of all the stuff, right? Then she starts hanging out with him like Michael tells you in his moonwalk book that they were living with Diana Ross and that him and Diana Ross are specifically going out alone together over a period of over a year, almost every day. And she's trained him in the ways of the world. So everything works with my story everything there's nothing that doesn't work with my story my story is dead on because of the actual facts and I, that's why I don't people say oh well, I need DNA DNA you know why you need DNA because you're dumb because you're dumb first of all you're dumb and then you're not even qualified to call yourself a Michael Jackson fan because you can't even take the second that it takes to say could this happen that's it you have to say could it happen and you people, no, 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 because you're not even a Michael Jackson fan. You people are so pathetic and weak. You can't deal with any form of the reality. You guys are in La La Land. You guys are living in Neverland. It's pathetic. You're not fans. What are you? You guys are just pathetic.